It is the sports dish and uh, the smell doesn't tell a very good story. We do have an update that is coming out of uh, Chambogo where Uganda is playing uh, Italy in the ICC Cricket World Cup Challenge League B. Now the second innings are underway and uh, it was uh, Simon Sessazi and uh, Emmanuel Hasaya who did open for Uganda and guess what? After four balls, uh, Hasaya uh, is out uh, of uh, this particular game, and uh, that's a wicked drop for Uganda. And as we speak at the moment, uh, it is a 14 for one. Uganda is uh, batting uh, the third over. Uh, we are chasing 107 runs uh, in the remaining uh, 285 balls uh, with nine wickets that uh, we need to defend. So let's wait and see how that uh, will go on. The Chris at the moment, uh, it is uh, Simon Sesazi and uh, Ronok Patel. Uh, we hope uh, that uh, that part partnership can try to hold um, everything together as I wait uh, and see how the other batters can come and uh, do see that you're going to do pick their second win of the competition because without this win the chances of going back on the log and qualifying uh, uh, for uh, the, the next round of the, the competition are going to be really uh, really really hard. Now, those are the live pictures uh, from Chambogo where Uganda is uh, uh, playing Italy. It is Ronak Patel uh, batting now together with Simon Sesazi as uh, Italy do the bowling. They are defending their runs as uh, Uganda are defending their wickets. And I will keep you posted as we get out of here. But uh, we do engage our guest at uh, the moment, Ivan Magomu, the captain of um, the Rugby Cranes. And there's something I want to get out of the way uh, before we discuss this because I tried uh, to inquire from Emanzi here. And Emanzi uh, wasn't also uh, certain. So, uh, Ivan, uh, I, I want to know when you were school a young when you were still a young boy playing rugby uh, is it true that you won the school's league with smack namiriango and hana yeah because we are not sure about smack it is true uh for smack i was i think on the 40 man squad 40 man squad yes you're like samuel later in that uh champions league final of 2002 so does that mean you're the only player in history to win the school's rugby league with three different schools. Yes. I got your confidence with that answer. Why the change of schools? Why the change of schools? Yeah, consistently. Uh, fate, you know, fate. Uh, yeah, you know, you never know your journey. Uh, once you're a stubborn guy in school, uh, some <laughs> things may not go well. Uh, but you know, it was fate and I don't regret having mm. changed schools. Yeah, it's, it's good that you chose the right one in the end. <laughs> <laughs> you ended up in the right school. <laughs> <laughs> was it Smack Hana Namidango or Smack Namidango Hana? Namidango was the last. Oh. Okay. Uh, then the other question I want to get out of the way before, of course, uh, we discuss what we are supposed to discuss. I think it should have been around 2013 or 2014. Uh, then I was still writing for the Daily Monitor. Uh, we are in the newsroom, uh, those who but just joined the Daily Monitor and uh, he's telling us about this young boy called Ivan Magomo who plays rugby and stuff like that. So those who are telling us all the nice things about Ivan Magomo and all the bad things about Ivan Magomo. Mm. So after that, uh, the sports editor at the time, uh, Mark Namanya, uh, told those in Uganda, he told him in Uganda, you never know your one, your good day. I want you to give me a feature story for the score on Saturday. <laughs> so Deus was put to task um, to do a story, a story that was well written and of course well edited uh, by Ismail Dakawa Chigongo. So that Saturday Pirates had a game at Legends and I was like, I need to go and see this mm -hmm. budding superstar. Uh, I go, I get to Legends and of course I'm, I'm looking out for the jersey number 10, I, Ivan Magom. But for some reason, somebody else struck me. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, Marvin Odong, uh, the way he was playing. I mean, it was out. It, I instantly fell in love with the guy, and uh, from that point on, I started following him. So I you want fell to ask. Fell in love with his rugby. Yeah, with, the, with his rugby. So, <laughs> so I want to ask uh, Ivan this question now: uh, Who do you prefer, Marvin the teammate or Marvin the coach? Uh, you know, uh, Marvin is my guy. I joined, I found Marvin in Pirates. Mm. Uh, he's one of the guys that, you know, encouraged me to join Pirates. And um, he was my captain mm. at Pirates and I was the vice. And unfortunately, when he got the injury, he stepped away and I took over from him. Mm. But, you know, I prefer both 
both the mother, <laughs> no, that, both that, the coach that, that, and, and that, that response we shall not accept. So for me, for me, I was thinking he's going to say the coach because he's, he's currently his coach, but... Uh, but uh, you have to have one. Answer. I think we all prefer. I, the I prefer having the player. Oh, thank you, thank you very player. much. <laughs> thank, yeah. thank you very much for that for that response. Uh, of course, um, we are here to talk the 2023 Africa uh, Rugby Cup. Uh, first of all, the preparations. You guys at some stage it should have been last week. We are camping at the Fofa Technical Center in Injeru, which is an artificial turf. And actually, that's how I learned that you guys are going to be playing on an astro turf in France. Have you had any kind of experience of playing rugby on an Astro Tough or that will be the first for you and probably some of your other teammates? It's going to be the first time um, for most of us. Uh, for my other teammate, Philip, who is already in France, he has had a chance to play on the Tough, but uh, for most of us, it's going to be the first time. Uh, uh, Ivan, uh, what I wanted to, uh, my first question is uh, uh, after you learned that uh, uh, the guys who are in the seven self fulfilled, we're not going to be with you in the 15s and uh, some of them you have been playing with them uh, uh, for a while in the 15s. How did that news uh, struck you? Uh, you know, we have depth. I believe we have depth. Uh, and it gives chance to, to the young players to step into the shoes. Uh, it's a big year for us, but you know, the seven guys were given an opportunity. They are given a choice to choose whether they can join us and, you know, they turned it down. You know, they have Commonwealth coming up, they have World Cup in, in SA. Mm. So, uh, it, of course, uh, it kind of struck us, but, you know, we have to move on. As, as the 15th side, we also have to build the 15th brand and, you know, go on to win. And it's a good step going forward, you know, separating the 7th from the 15th. We don't have to keep depending on each other. So I believe that that's a good step going forward. And, uh, and then uh, my second question, uh, uh, you, I remember we played uh, uh, Algeria and Ghana in uh, the second phase of qualification because definitely we were not in the first phase. And uh, you played uh, against uh, Senegal too. And uh, by the looks of things, if we can uh, get over Kenya, we're playing either Senegal or Algeria. And I uh, was listening uh, to some of the stories that uh, uh, some of your mates are talking about Senegal and how hard it is for them uh, to, to, to for, for you guys to play against them because uh, I, I hear they're so physical. How confident are you that? Uh, oh, okay. How would you rate the chances of the team going past Kenya and then uh, one of Algeria and Senegal and uh, probably winning it all? Uh, of course, the high chances. Um, the Ugandan, as Ugandans, are usually small. We are not that physical, mm. uh, but you know we rely on our strength. That is speed agility to overcome and maybe fitness to overcome these other teams. Yeah, we played Senegal in Dakar. Uh, it was uh, the environment wasn't nice. It was really hot and that's why we got some difficulties. But whenever they would come to Kampala here, it would be a walkover for Whoa. us. We've beaten them on several occasions. Personally, I can say I have, I have never lost to Senegal from the under 19 time. We beat them all the way. So yeah, our chances if we get past Kenya, I think that there's a chance for us to go all the way through. Yeah, maybe Ivan, I will, uh, my question will still be about uh, the team after uh, taking out the seven players. When you look at uh, the players that are coming out, of course you do not have the likes of Aaron, you don't have Philip, you, ha you have a midfielder that does not have uh, Michael or Ian Munyani, uh, you don't have Philip at 15. Uh, what kind of team do we actually take to France when you uh, look at the crop that you have uh, in camp? What kind of team uh, do we take to France? How strong is it uh, to take on Kenya? And uh, maybe the rest of the guys, uh, if you get past Kenya. Uh, we are going to find Philip in France. He's mm. going to be an addition. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's a positive. Mm. But um, like I said, uh, we don't, we don't, on my team, we don't play names, you know. We play as a team, we play as a brotherhood. We don't depend on names. And most of the teams have had a chance to captain from high school, have never had superstars. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll say this in, in, in my Form 6, when I was captain for Namiliango, my team was mainly comprised of senior 3s and senior 4s. And you know, there are no superstars in the team. And we went all the way through to the finals. Unfortunately, we lost to Hana but we forced them to a replay in a final. Uh, same can be carried to my team. Uh, Pirates, young unknown players with great potential. 
were able to, you know, uh, develop, go all the way through and, you know, uh, win the treble and also keep challenging. So uh, I don't really believe in names. We just have to believe in the structure, the system, believe in, our, in the coaches, and also believe in ourselves. If we go outside there, if we go to France on 2nd July and play our style of rugby, then why not? Uh, t yes. Tell us about our style of rugby. Uh, we are not physical. Uh, our style of rugby is, is free, free-flowing rugby, you know, fast rugby. And the, the opponents we are going to play against, everyone knows how, you know, they, they are one root guys and physical guys. So we just have to, you know, tighten our, our screws here and there. And yeah, we shall. Yeah. Uh, as a, of course, as a, we get to the list of uh, the team that is traveling to France uh, on our TV screens, I just wanted uh, Emanze here to probably give us your thoughts uh, on the team that uh, is going to be traveling to, to France. Well, it's a team that uh, is uh, definitely depleted if you remove the sevens players. Uh, but uh, I think like Ivan mentions, uh, we've got to get past that. We cannot uh, talk about the sevens anymore uh, because they, they, those players are not here. And uh, it's a predominantly t a new team if you look at uh, the players that have been uh, coming through and getting the opportunity uh, to play for the 15s. And, uh, I think uh, maybe Ivan will tell us about some of the new things that they've been working on, uh, the combinations uh, that uh, they've been able to work on uh, in that team because there's changes. Uh, you don't have Aaron at uh, uh, number nine uh, who gets to play nine and ten and uh, who, is, who plays twelve. Where do you play yourself, uh, Ivan? Do you uh, come in as a number ten or you're going to play at number twelve? I think. Uh, maybe that's the, an update that I would want to uh, get from Ivan uh, from the training sessions that you've had. Uh, what are some of the new combinations in this team that uh, you've been uh, able to work on uh, as a team? Yeah, we see a, lo a lot of new faces, um, especially in the scrum. Uh, we have uh, Marco Moding from, you know, Halle Queens in Kenya. At number nine, we have Epilo and Wanyama, the center pairing. Uh, I've been running at center 12 most of the time, and Joseph Aredo has been playing at 10. So we may see a center combination of me and maybe Innocent Gukto or Ogena Pius. Mm. Um, yeah, there is, and then we have Ojo, Oyek Joseph at 15. And these are exciting combinations. And Did you take you? We shall, we shall, we shall keep the, uh, the opponents guessing because now it's new faces on the team. Mm, they'll, they'll find it difficult. Uh, uh, Ivan, uh, after you guys watching the Sevens uh, team um, elevate uh, you, our, our, our rugby in the last, uh, I think, a uh, couple of weeks, does it bring added uh, pressure to you guys uh, to ensure that probably you take uh, the 15s uh, uh, brand of the game to the heights that uh, the Sevens have elevated it? Yeah, there is pressure, but it's, it's positive pressure, you know. Uh, mm. They've shown us that, you know what, these guys can be beaten and they can be beaten thoroughly. Uh, that saying, we've beaten Kenya before, we've beaten them on numerous occasions, mm. so we just need to believe. Uh, the the sevens going on to win, you know, it's a stepping stone. Uh, they've opened the way, they've led the way. I also heard of us playing cricket on Sunday, the Kenya cricket. Mm. Uh, we shall be there to support them. You know, we are playing the noisy neighbors. So if the cricket can also beat them, then uh, the owners will be left unto us to go to France and yeah, do the same. Yeah, maybe Ivan, uh, uh, at a personal level, how is it like uh, to captain uh, the rugby cranes? When you look at uh, uh, the players that have had the opportunity to be captains of this team, uh, how uh, big is it for you to be captain of this team? Uh, it's a great honor, you know. There's a bit of pressure uh, last year as I was announced captain. And, you know, I think people, everyone would tell, after we had games, guys were like, ah, Magomi, you're a bit nervous. <laughs> you are not being yourself. You forget about being captain on pitch and, you know, play your game. And yeah, uh, the previous guys, uh, the likes of Brian of Dong, Matayo, uh, they've, they've led well. And yeah, uh, the, actually, the yeah, plan... Maybe, Ivan, to cut you short, yeah. uh, if you could throw more light, you were named captain, then the previous captain was named as one of your assistants. How did that make you feel? 
Uh, you know, it, it is, it, it's a plan for the union. We are looking at a four-year plan. If you notice, uh, most of the players on the team uh, are still young players, still have a long way to go. So uh, Brian Odong being named my vice was to actually guide me through, you know, the whole captaincy. And yeah, uh, it really helped me a lot. I think he knew he was going to step away and I learned from him for the short while he was with me. Yeah, but Emazi, that, that, that's the squad that will be travelling to France. Yeah, I think we talked, we've talked about it uh, before, a mix of uh, uh, young and a bit of experience. Uh, Joseph Aredo being one of those uh, coming into by coming back into the setup. You have uh, uh, Ivan himself who has been there before. Uh, then you have uh, new faces that are really getting their chance. Uh, the innocent Gokto that he uh, mentioned might be starting uh, as uh, his pair uh, at uh, at uh, twelve and thirteen and. Uh, that's huge. You have Lawrence Sebuliba that uh, is also uh, an experienced one. Alema Ruweza, uh, my guy, that is my classmate. I, you I, you I always have, have to mention that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's a good team uh, that, uh, of course, it's tough. Uh, I think if you've uh, followed in the last few years, it has mainly been Namibia dominating this uh, African Championship. And uh, maybe this time there's a difference, and uh, Ivan can tell us how. Uh, do you take the idea of playing in France? Are you very excited about it, or are you, uh, or would you have loved to have the home crowd? Uh, how, how did you receive this? First of all, uh, you're going to play this uh, in France. How does that make you feel? Are you excited, or you're disappointed that you're not playing at home? I uh, would have loved actually to play at home, to play in Africa, because you know, it's an African tournament. The conditions will most probably favor us, you know, and. Uh, Anyway, that question mostly should be directed to the management, to the union. <laughs> yeah. we, we don't know how uh, it came about for the tournament to be hosted in France. Mm. We are just players and we are supposed to do our part on the pitch. But uh, the other bit is for the guys going to France, uh, there will be opportunities. If, if we, we get to sell uh, rugby to the outside countries, maybe the scouts, other teams will get interested in our players and we shall get to showcase that, you know what? Uh, there's a bit of rugby talent in Uganda and maybe we shall have some more rugby exports going out there. Uh, Ivan, uh, the fact that we are playing Kenya, uh, for me as a person, I'm a little bit concerned that uh, we are playing Kenya first. But uh, how, how, how do you build up uh, to such a game? Because uh, I'm told this, this one comes with uh, something special you need. Do you guys feel extra pressure and extra special playing and beating uh, Kenya as compared to the rest of the other nations? It's a derby, of course it's a derby, mm -hmm. but uh, there's no pressure whatsoever unto us. We are the massive underdogs, mm -hmm. they've got lots of superstars, they've had camp, you know, for a month or so in South Africa, came back, hosted a couple of games in Nairobi while we were doing our, you know, undercover training. And <laughs> many guys have signed us off, really written us off. But so that is pressure carried on to the Kenyan side there's more pressure on their shoulders uh, as compared to us. So uh, we just have to go and, you know, stick to our game plan, put our bodies on the line. And yeah, that would be a very big shocker. Yeah, I mean, Ivan, maybe as captain of the team, uh, there are some things that uh, never seem to go away uh, when uh, the rugby cranes are playing, especially money issues. Has all that been uh, sorted by the union? Do you, do, shall, should we not expect uh, any noise? coming about uh, allowances. How has that been addressed in camp? Uh, there has been an improvement, really. Uh, the players are not complaining. Uh, the president has actually, you know, fulfilled his promises. Uh, I can tell you this, if, if, if there are any complaints, you'd have heard them by now. <laughs> but so far, not bad. Uh, there's a lot of discipline in the camp in case uh, the players are not happy with with the small small issues there's a channel of communication so we've been we've managed to handle that amongst ourselves and yeah uh, you'd give credit to the team manager the management for having come through so i don't think there'll be any issues unless otherwise uh, and uh, this is a question that uh, i understand you must have encountered uh, for all the, the media visits you have been doing uh, since you are named captain but um, can you sit 
wherever you are sitting right now and tell Ugandans that um, the team you are going to go with in France is going, is going to return as a whole. Because <laughs> 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 uh, in the past it has been happening <laughs> and I remember the last time we were in France <laughs> the last time we were in France you know what happened but uh, can you confidently sit there that, and that, uh, tell us that they are go all going to return including you. That question should be directed to the seventh setup the sevens <laughs> captain. I personally never. Uh, but Ivan, you've yeah. played for the sevens setup before. So yes. Go, uh, go is on there. Technically, you are also <laughs> part of there. Yeah. So technically, I've never heard of a fifteens player mm. not coming. But back. also, the fifteens players have not had um, a chance <laughs> of going to France and that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I haven't had. I haven't from the discussions uh, we've been having with the players. Uh, I haven't had anyone, you know, plan on staying back. Well, are you coming back as a person? Personally, yeah, I have to come back, man. I, I have family here. <laughs> I, have, I have a career I have to push for. Mm. Why would I stay in France and have to suffer with the whole Francophone? It's not all about suffering. Then, uh, I saw James Odong looking good. This <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> the, the beat that uh, the only professional rugby player we have at the moment, uh, the Ugandan uh, does play in France, and uh, that's uh, uh, Philip Walker. Uh, then you have also these games uh, happening in France. Would you say that uh, probably this is uh, the biggest platform as uh, Ugandan rugby players you can ever play on to go out there and showcase yourselves and probably have more of you uh, getting uh, deals or gigs like uh, Philip is? Uh, um, like I said before, it's, 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 it's a platform for us. Uh, we just have to go out there, express ourselves. We are really happy for Philip. He's been an ambassador. He's led by example. And, you know, we just have to go there as Uganda and stamp it. You know, show the world, show the scouts that, you know what, we have talent down here. And I'm sure uh, if we have an impressive tournament, there are guys that are going to get signed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I won't ask you our chances. I'll direct that question to Emanzi. Uh, what, what are our chances? Of course, uh, it's a knockout uh, format. Uh, you, if you, you can't win against Kenya, you're out of uh, uh, the, 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 the quotation to, to the World Cup and all that. Yeah, maybe I, I, I think the easy answer for me would be that we will not play at the World Cup uh, uh, <laughs> next year. But I wanted to, I actually, it's the question that I wanted to put to Ivan to mm -hmm. tell us the realistic chance. If you look at Uganda, can you? Uh, look in the camera and tell Ugandans that we have a big chance of being at the World Cup uh, in France. Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, we, we, we don't, you know, put in all the hard work to go and participate. We are going to compete, Clive. We are going to compete. Uh, we are going to, you know, compete for that place at the World Cup next year. And, you know, it is, it is upon us, it is incumbent upon us to take it a game game per game, you know, one game at a time. And yeah, most of the guys don't believe in us uh, because of, you know, uh, the gaps that have been left by the sevens players. But you shouldn't undermine mm. our team. Whoever gets to undermine our setup is making a very big mistake, especially for a team that is led by me. <laughs> is that your last uh, word to Ugandan? The last word to the Ugandan is... Uh, back us, have faith in us, believe in us, we've, we've worked really hard and we are going to deliver. Mm. Then lastly, Mbari Heroes is still the uh, Heroes are doing a good job, you know, coming back, uh, unfortunately. You've not come back anywhere, you're, you're still in the lower divisions. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you can see, it's, it's a process, it's a process. Uh, unlucky, we didn't qualify for the big league, but it's a, it's a step going forward, I'm happy with whatever the management is doing. Uh, I'd like to send shout outs to, to the chairman and <laughs> also my good friend, Magamba Abdallah. He, he's doing a wonderful job for Heroes. And yeah, uh, you know, it being a community team, it has all our backing and prayers and support. And I'm sure uh, before you know it, we shall be in the Premier League competing. We, we hope you return. Yes. Uh, 
people who used to make those long trips to Mbali uh, used to say that uh, they are very interesting. But of course, uh, that's uh, Ivan uh, Magomo. Uh, we've been talking to the captain of uh, the rugby cranes. Uh, rugby cranes are, are leaving this coming week for France, where they will be taking part in the 2023 Africa Rugby Cup, which is also a qualifier uh, for the Rugby World Cup. Only one team from uh, that competition gets to qualify directly for the World Cup. The team that finishes second goes through another phase of uh, qualifying. If they can make it, then they get to qualify. But as we get out of here, uh, we'll return to Chambogo, where Uganda is playing against uh, Italy. We are batting at the moment. And after eight overs, uh, we did lose our opening order. Of course, uh, Emmanuel Hesaya was out. Then uh, you also have uh, Simon Cesar has uh, been uh, bowled out, uh, 15 balls of uh, 24 runs uh, with four boundaries and one six. And at the moment, you have Ronak uh, Patel together with uh, Kenneth Weiss for batting. But uh, interestingly, Shaban, as we get out of here, Patel has been restricted to just five runs of 15 balls. Like everyone who comes to bowl a team, just make sure this gentleman doesn't put runs on the board. Uh, 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 I don't want to say that. Uh, I told you we shouldn't get excited early, but uh, uh, the fact <laughs> that Simon Tessas has only put up 15 runs in 24 balls is worrying. And uh, you mentioning Patel, five runs sure. of 15 balls. I think... Uh, I think it's going. It is only getting tough for us, but hopefully. We well, can I don't think it's getting tough. Uh, we need 88 runs uh, from mm -hmm. 255 balls with eight wickets remaining. Surely, yeah, if we can uh, def take care of uh, the batting, we should be able uh, to hit uh, that uh, target. But that's all we had for you today on the show. It is uh, being the sports dish, uh, Shaban and Manzi. A big thank you to our guest, uh, Ivan Magoma, and of course everyone in the control room, uh, Inginia Charles, uh, Robert, uh, Dennis. Um, Neil Fat, Alovi, uh, Gerard, uh, Adrian, who have uh, made sure that this show is a success. I wish you a blessed weekend and we'll be back on Monday. <laughs>